Hello, welcome to another Learn Learn Computer Science video. In this video, we're going to be looking at FINS classification and SISD, SIMD, MISD, and MIMD. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, what is it? Well, it was proposed by Michael J. Flynn back in 1966, a professor currently at Stanford, and he said that you can break architecture down into four different types. And you can have single instruction, single data architecture, single instruction, multiple data architecture, multiple instruction, single data architecture, and multiple instruction, multiple data architectures. And these are four different concepts of how to compute. So let's have a look at them in terms. So let's start with the simplest of them, which is SISD, single instruction, single data. Uh, and this is quite simple. It's based around the original von Neumann architecture. And all it is, is a single processor takes data from a single address in memory and it performs an instruction on that data. And it only does it with one piece of data at a time. And then it just goes from instruction to instruction to instruction. Um, you can perform, uh, you can implement pipelining with SISD, but if you do that, you can still only execute one instruction at a time, even though these uh, the individual instructions might be at different stages. Uh, and all single processing systems are SISD. So how does it work? Well, what are the advantages and disadvantages? A single instruction, single data system, they're cheap because they're quite simple, they're quite, uh, relatively speaking, they're quite cheap to design and quite cheap to manufacture, which is good. And also because you've only got a single processor working, it's a lower power consumption model, which is great for systems where you don't need a lot of power uh, or you know power consumption is an issue. So for instance, remote systems where they're relying on battery power and maybe solar power to keep them running. Um, but of course, because they're only a single core system, they are limited in their speed. You're going to get bottlenecks around the processor in terms of executing instructions. Um, so what are they used for? Well, they're mainly used for microcontrollers, systems where they've only got limited functionality uh, and they don't need a high, high speed, a lot of processes going on at once. And they also used to be um, used in the older mainframes of the 60s and 70s, uh, not so much now. Um, so there's a single instruction, single data systems. So let's have a look at the next one, which is a single instruction still, but it's multiple data. So how does this work? Well, this is where a, a single instruction is executed on multiple different pieces of data. So basically you have the same instruction, whatever it is, and uh, you have multiple processors. Each processor takes a different piece of data and the, um, the same instruction is processed against it. Um, now you might be going, well, hang on a minute, why do we need to take uh, the same instruction and process it again, lots of different data pieces of data? Where would that be useful? Well, that's actually really quite useful uh, if you think about it, for instance, in computer games. So for instance, here you've got, um, here where we've got a face on the screen in a computer. Um, if you're moving this face across the screen, and let's say for instance here where it's moving it two squares to the right and one square down, um, you're doing the same instruction against every single square. Whatever's there, you're taking it and you're moving it two to the right and one down. So it's the same instruction for every single piece of data in this entire array. So um, that means it's actually quite efficient. It's actually quite effective. Um, which means that it's useful for things like uh, graphics drivers and um, graphics processors um, where large amounts of the same instruction are being processed on um, large amounts of data. Um, so again, 3D graphics, those sorts of things. It's also useful in scientific processing where you're dealing with vectors or large arrays. Uh, all the same instruction, you're manipulating lots of data, but you're doing the same thing over and over again. So that's single instruction, multiple data systems, useful on GPUs.
Um, disadvantages, it's only because you're just doing the same one instruction across everything, it's quite limited. It, it can only really be used in certain situations and it's not much use in other situations at all outside of that. So the next one is multiple instruction single data. And this is where you have one data source, one data pool, and the same data, exactly the same piece of data, gets fed into multiple processors. Um, but the each processor runs separate instructions on that data. And this is really, really specific. It's, it's not widely available or not widely used at all. Um, and its main usage is where you've got situations where you need to double check things to ensure that the outcome of instructions is as expected. And this is uh, especially important if you're, um, for instance, in space shuttle flight controls, because if the, the you know, for instance, if there is a, a malfunction in the hardware and one of the processes uh, malfunctions while whilst you're flying, um, then that can have catastrophic consequences and as it has done in the past. So what you need there is you need to be able to, when you're getting the data in from the sensors externally, uh, on in from either outside the vehicle or data from the control systems, then you need to be able to double check all the instructions that are being processed. So you have multiple processors, each runs separate instructions, um, and if they, they basically bring them all together and see if they match. And if they do, it's fine. And if not, then there's some kind of error there and it's going to have to be dealt with. So really important for real-time fault detection. Um, not widely used at all because it's such limit in its application and very complicated to implement. So it's only used in very specific systems. Okay, and this brings us through to the next one, which is multiple instruction, multiple data systems. And this is where you have an instruction pool and you have a data pool and you have multiple processes and they're all taking different instructions and working on different data all at the same time, uh, or, or it can be at the same time. Uh, and this means that you can execute a lot of instructions on a lot of data at the same time, because if you need to execute more instructions um, or you need to work on more data, all you need to do is just add another processor to the system. And that's where you get these kind of quad core or octa core processors. All you're doing is you're making the whole system go faster because you're adding another processor which can work completely independently, uh, theoretically anyway, um, from all the other uh, processors. And these are used, are very, very common. Uh, they're used in laptops, mobile phones, modern desktops, most modern systems, um, also with, you know, your kind of supercomputers and those kind of things. All of those use multiple instruction, multiple data architecture. Uh, and it's great for systems, especially with um, desktops or laptops or your, your phone. They're really, really useful in situations where you need multitasking, where you can your uh, the, com the computer is going to be doing multiple things at the same time. So you might be browsing the internet at the same time as the computer is playing music, at the same time as it's downloading updates to your system, at the same time as it's synchronizing your local files with a cloud storage, that kind of thing. Um, so that's multiple instruction, multiple data, and most modern systems, laptops, smartphones, are MIMD. There we go. So that's Flynn's architecture. Uh, if you uh, need any quizzes or anything like that, take a look at, on the uh, website, which I'll put a link to. And if you did like the tutorial, please like the video and uh, subscribe if you want to for more videos. Thank you very much.